do. Yeah. 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 Wanna... <laughs> <laughs> well, both both our shows had many low brow jokes in it, which mm. Rob enjoyed. So uh, that has a, that's a plus. did I. Kind of. Uh, anyways, yeah, I like that humor. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. Welcome, everyone, to the Heroes World Quarantine Podcast. I am your host, Dupe. With me today, surprisingly enough, is one of the owners and proprietors of Heroes World, based in Markham slash Unionville, Ontario. That'd be John Ho. Say hello to the people at home. What's up, Doc? And <laughs> John is currently in the land of enchanted forests right now. Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think isn't that the the He-Man universe that was bl- you know spoiler Paternia, yeah. Paternia. <laughs> Paternia. Paternia. Yeah. Paternia. yeah. Um, and then of course he is not in Paternia because he's no. not yet earned the a hero's uh, no, death. I would never. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> our resident Prince of Mischief, uh, Mr. Rob Gidor. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Did you a stinkor? Did you stinkor? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You could be. You're totally a stinkor. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Uh, we have a fun slate today. We did yeoman's work for you. Mm. I watched five episodes, the end of Masters of the Universe Revelations. We watched, two of us watched two episodes of Super Crook. One of us watched one episode of Super Crook. Find out what we think on this episode of Heroes World, the podcast. All right. So we had a long conversation before about He-Man. So we're going to go straight into it. There's no point. Uh, we'll get into spoilers momentarily. But John, you watched all five. Did it sink in? Was this what you were hoping for? Were all the clamoring and complaining about He-Man warranted, basically? Okay. So you know what? I, I didn't have a problem with the first part uh i actually quite enjoyed the first part Mm -hmm. we'll get into we'll get into the details of this uh second part but it uh you know this this is a long returning property from the 80s one of these childhood things so could it ever live up to the hype um it's a tall order um did this not not quite for me hype Um, what was the hype because if you watch just just a a return of everything from your garbage Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, it's it's not um, like it's like the standards or people thinking yeah, about the no, show. It's like no, it wasn't but Shakespeare. but 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 you're going back and living through this in what's called you know the rules colored glasses or or the or the memories of in fond memories in your mind. Um, so I challenge hoping anyone that this would bring those <laughs> to watch those episodes and old episodes of GI Joe and Transformers. They are hey hot unless you watch garbage. Transformers the movie. Transformers the movie still different. Up. That's a movie, but the TV shows themselves were. <laughs> awful they're, they're all que- they're all questionable but you know what they split the season in half um allowing more hype to build so there was a lot more resting on this conclusion and think expecting of things to happen and stuff like that um so it didn't quite get there for me um but it, i think it was still worth a watch and especially if you've already invested in the first half you are definitely going to probably want to finish it off and just watch the rest of it rob um, yeah, so I, uh, here's, it, it, it was vastly different from the first five. And I say this for a couple of reasons. One is that if we remember back in the oh, so far distant past of July of 2021, um, a while ago, there was a lot of, of outcry and nerd rage with respect to this property. Just for a refresher, this is the masters of the universe revelation. This is like a continuation of the original OG that Stu was saying before, this is, Um, shepherded by Kevin Smith uh, of Clerks fame. Uh, And there was a lot of anger uh, back in July with what they called the woke He-Man and that it was no He-Man. It was all about Tila and everything else like that. So we we dealt with that. We dived into it. I think we all were pretty uh, hyped on this show because it took chances. It swung for fences and it landed. It looks gorgeous. That is that continues right through these five episodes he's back five however i feel like it's diametrically different in tone from the first five um i feel like it's Big not <laughs> thanks i feel like it's it's not as uh boundary not even boundary push, not as relevant as the first five were i found that it actually rested more on the old 80s laurels of the cheesy dialogue and and uh and writing and i was a little bit surprised so uh, I'm interested to find out how we all kind of rate these final five. I, I, I agree with John. It's definitely worth a watch. It's, it's, it looks great. Um, 
but I, I'm interested to find out what you guys uh, overall think when we get into the spoiler stuff. I think it'd be funny as an exercise because, as you mentioned, Rob, eloquently, that we saw it a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. And uh, it'd be interesting to see someone's thought process of watching now that all 10 are available, watching that 10 at once. Would there be the yeah. same impact as when we did when the uh, the outrage occurred in terms of that? The, you know, the people felt the, the bait and switch of like, this is a He-Man show. And then He-Man, you know, if you haven't watched the first episode, five episodes, he dies. And then they're like, he just comes back in flashbacks. So, mm. but again, it's, it's shining. Yeah, I, thought, I thought on. it worked really well. I thought it worked really well. Actually. That, that, that yeah. first seat, that first five episodes had emphasis on other characters to show what's Paternia like at this, you know, Eternia like right now, you know, what's going on. The fact that you had characters uh, including this weird, like the magic is running out and there's all this stuff happening in terms of the, the, the uh, techno cult. So these are interesting things that were happening that kind of addressed near the end of this season. But it was, like to your point, Rob, a different direction. Uh, it it would be interesting to see what happened if you watch all at once. Because again, there's a, still a smooth transition in because when you watch that, it it doesn't seem like anything really happened between episodes like five and six. And you're like, oh, okay. Like if you didn't know any better, you're like, okay, cool. Like there's there's no big deal. Because you can skip to the next episode immediately. There's no like <gasps> dum 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 moment of like pause. Right. Well, I so, felt like the first five you were on it straight away. You could yeah. gun that. You could, you could, you could hammer down the pedal and you were driving fast and it was coming at you hard and fast. And yeah. I felt like these last five were turning into more of a, a windy road. And it wasn't you. I for me, it lost a bit of the momentum that that punch that we got in that first. I five. think it's still Tila's journey, and mm-hmm. she still makes an important decision. Yeah. that differentiates her from the past uh man at arms was still badass and you can a lot again a lot of characters in this universe show a lot of sacrifice mm-hmm. and, and even the fact that you know without going like even he-man's parents are like stuff's happening i'm like whoa i never thought i'd know this much about he-man's the king and queen of eternia like yeah this is this is bonkers yeah. so there's a lot of interesting things in terms of, of ramifications but we will jump to that right now John, you recommend watching it. What are you giving this half season out of 10? Half season, I don't remember what I gave to the, the first <laughs> season, but I'm pretty sure it was higher. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I probably only give this maybe. Uh, John, you give everything uh, an eight two, and above. Yeah, so I know. To, to, be be generous, I want, to be generous, I, I, I want to give it a seven, but I feel like it, for some reason, this one only hits at maybe a six, 6.5 for me. I'll say 6.5. Wow. Rob? Yeah, I don't remember what I rated the first one. Other, I know it wasn't. I don't think I did a nine. I might have done an eight point five. Yeah, I think we're um, in the eights. I think we're in the eights. Yeah. So you know, um, I still think it. Ha- it, it says. It, I still think it's important. I think it. It, it does. It, if if anything, it completes the story. Mm-hmm. Um, as you know, I'm going to give it a. I'm going to give it a solid seven. Wow, Interesting. rare occasion wow. where I rate it lower wow. than well. Yeah, it's uh, to be fair. I'm, I still liked it, and I think I'm gonna mm-hmm. probably. I think I probably give the first season a seven point five or an eight, and I'm gonna be mm-hmm. consistent. I I'm gonna give this a seven point five or whatever my my last rating was because I think that there's still enough meat on these bones without spoiling, it, which will go momentarily. Uh, that continues. I think consistently it was good. I think I, I suspect if this came out as a all in one, yep. I would have rated the whole thing much higher. Yeah. But well, the fact that there's this break and other things that. that happen. Yeah. My next question, surprise, surprise, follow up is what are you giving it the whole thing? Like, what's your rating uh, for all 10 episodes, John? Oh, I don't even know if I can combine it right now because I watched them separate. I, I don't have that experience of them mm. all in one row. But if I had to, average them all out and rate it as a series overall i will say i did like a lot of the stuff that happened in the first half mm. um so i would i would bring it back to an eight. i would go with a higher score of yeah. the two as an overall rating bell curve so up baby probably, yeah i would i would curve it up to maybe eight out of ten if you if you have to take the whole thing yeah. together rob 
three. No, I'm going. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand how the law of averages work. Uh, 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 you're talking about the three amigos. Uh, I right, think you yes, got this exactly. Again, um, second mention. That's right. Um, I, no, I'll, I'll give it an eight as well. Uh, and I'll explain my thoughts on this season compared to the first. But for sure, it's, it's, it's an eight as a total package. Yeah. I am total agreeance as well. I would say it's an eight. Well, you gave uh, it the same rating for both seasons. <laughs> yeah, but but I would say as a whole, I'd still give yep, it an eight. You stick with so it, yeah. Okay. There we go. Uh, triple eights. Uh, all right, we're going to go full spoilers now on the, sh- on the second half of the season. Uh, John, me and Rob were joking about Hulk He-Man. Did you find <laughs> yeah. Hulk He-Man as enjoyable as we did? Um, He was funny. And I look forward to the action figure. They've already announced that they're doing an action figure for it. So I look forward to the action figure. I did find it very funny that he is basically the Hulk. And then they had to try and calm him down. And then all of a sudden, um, who, who talks to him? His dad his or dad. something said something. His yeah, dad's like, finally, the son finally finally gives him his son's low. acceptance. Yeah, 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 and all of a sudden he powers down. Um, <laughs> yeah. I did think it was really funny how he was just wrecking people's faces in, in a and Skeletor was just like, get this guy off me. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it, it was it was fun. It was definitely a fun, one of the one of the highlights of the season to see. Um, like, because that, that would be one of the totally original things that popped up in this series. Yeah. That, and there's no previous lore that I'm aware of, unless there's some really deep cuts from some of the other He-Man series or something, that anything like that possibly existed. It's a really cool concept because even it was like, oh, the sword just helps me focus it. But like, yeah. I've never just gone full out. And it's just like, mm-hmm. that's what Skeletor wanted, full power. And- yeah, it's, it's kind of like the whole, the, that always that moral of the story thing where it's like, oh, the power was in you. It wasn't in this, um, you know, like placebo thing well, <laughs> it was always they, you they already <laughs> did that in in uh ragnarok where where oda's like are you the god of hammers it's like no you are <laughs> you are the god of thunder although the god of hammers would be a fire <laughs> yeah. ass movie you you're the god of thunder and the, the hammer helps you like harness the thunder so theoretically if 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 basically kevin smith watched ragnarok he's like that's very much it so yeah. it's it's that, but Rob, what are your thoughts? Yeah, no, I, on you mean on on the Savage He Hulk? Yeah. <laughs> yes, Savage, Savage, the Savage Hulk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, a very I, mirrored thing going on with She Hulk right now in the Avengers, which is just wrapped up. It's kind of fun. Yeah, no, I really liked it. Listen, it was it was more than just an homage. It was a complete parallel, mm. right? Uh, even to the fact that once Prince Adam gets powered down, or he, you know, uh, his dad, you know, brings him back to human form, he's like, I'm, I will never turn into that. I'm, he was a beast. He was uncontrollable rage. And I was like, it's the exact same shit. It's, it's your Dr. Banner going on about how you'll never give in to the, the you know, the strength and the anger of the Hulk. I mean, it, it, you, you, you couldn't find a more parallel, <laughs> you know, um uh character so yeah i thought it was really cool i really liked it um i would to be very honest with you i would have been how do you very- feel about savage he-man murdering a whole bunch of eternians that had just been zombified <laughs> yeah but they're zombies so it doesn't make a difference there's no yeah. there's no moral there's no moral uh yeah. or ethical question when they're already dead um john you better believe if you're a zombie i don't care i'm shooting you in the face so <laughs> what if, like what if and, and, and what if, if rob and i are zombies like, too oh. please do the same <laughs> Please no. just take us out. Just if, if yeah. we are zombified, yeah. you know, but, but make sure that we have a safe word. Like uh, it's not like Bill Murray. Like we got to make sure we decide on a safe <laughs> word. So if we're just yeah. dressed up as zombies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They then just don't. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll work on that. Maybe, maybe it has to be like, we'll have to yell savage, uh, uh like savage, savage he man. Uh, he man, <laughs> savage he man. You're like savage he man. And you're like, okay, I will kill you. Uh, you're right. That will be our, that will be our safe word. As long as we're not eating though, and then be like, oh, yeah! and then all of a sudden he's like, "You're a zombie." Um, You're a zombie. Yeah. I-, I would have liked actually to have seen the Savage He Man a-, a few more times. Like, I actually, I think for me that would have been really cool if out of these five episodes, he's in like four. Like yeah. that, they actually went full on Incredible Hulk TV show where it's Adam, and all of a sudden he calls <laughs> he the power. Like me when I'm powered <laughs> yeah. of grease skull, and he's no like, sword. "Oh no, don't, no!" And all of a sudden he, I have the power. Rawr. Like I thought that like, that to me would have been like I know people would have been like, "This is bullshit," but I think that would have been a hell of a lot of fun uh, if if we had a lot more of Savage uh, Hulk, uh, He Man. 
Um, so, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was really cool. I like that. I like the premise. I like the idea. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. We're going to, we're going to talk about Tila because part of the story is both, both, uh, Tila and with, well, we'll, we'll talk about evil Lynn afterwards, but, but Tila is part of this story. Uh, she has her arc fulfilled. So John, what are your thoughts on, on that? I thought it's still a great, like, despite me giving this season a lower rating, she's still, it, the expansion of this character or any characters in this universe is still fantastic. Like, you, beyond the toy, like, if you maybe got hardcore and you read the little mini comics, there's a little more explore, exploration into these characters of the mini comics, but no character has been kind of uh, opened up like, like Tila is now. Um, so I, I, I was down with it. I actually really like um, her design and things like that. I know a lot of people criticize the design in the, in the first half and things like that. So I, I, I like the character and I like that now she has um, a place other than just the female next to He-Man or, or whatever, you know, or Man-at-Arms daughter or whatever. I like the addition of uh, the tying of the history. I don't know if hardcore fans got pissed off at that, um, but I like the idea that there's this whole kind of circle of what, what she was supposed to possibly become, what the mother kind of splits off and does and all that kind of stuff. And then Adam has another secret that he kept from her. It's like, God, God damn it, how many secrets are you gonna keep from me? Um, but but she ended up for, for giving it on the end and then she kind of, uh, the, the I don't know if we're gonna get into it, the, but the lessons and the messages from this season definitely are very good messages and very good what things the messages, to- John? The, the messages of like it's kind of like a like a, almost like a group effort like it's all everybody it's not all on one person is it that is type it to of thing. have a familia familia yeah no every but it was also everybody's familia is different because um tila's parents get separated because of the sacrifice the mother makes and also adam's parents the king and the queen get like almost like a divorce situation which you know a lot of kids nowadays are dealing with um so it's like this not typical you know perfect families going all around it's showing that these, these characters come from all kinds of places and, and all, all different things can happen so I, I the messaging in the season is i think is very good and, and i guess tila is at the center of it for the season tila goes against her, you know kind of what the the monks and all basically she went full tila's mom went full jedi yeah, like, she, she could have just like cut yeah. off all relationships and must win yeah, she's went, like no this is not yeah. the way to do it and she figures out another way which is very strong of that character to not just be Oh, this is what the female uh, mother uh, caretaker like does. Like you do this, you sacrifice everything to save. Like they they cracked it open. So I thought that was cool. She cracked the code. Rob, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with everything John has said. Um. I I thought it was a good story arc for her over the full ten. I mean, she comes into her own. You know, this is a show called The Masters of the Universe. She is a master of the universe. Her arc ends as being uh, the sorceress now. She is in charge of of the magic realm, essentially. Castle Grayskull. Um, and Castle Grayskull. Yeah, so she is, you know, she is now the new sorceress. Um, and, and I think that that is, you know, I think, you know, if we go back into the old shows, I mean, they were always damsels in distress. And even though Tila was, you know, she had the ray gun and she was keep fighting her own, it was a He-Man centric show, whereas John says, you know, one could argue, well, this is a lot more Tila, but it's a collective effort that brought down so much so that even Skeletor then also kind of, you know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. <clears throat> I will say, though, that in tying into Tila's story arc and this idea of understanding the power and, you know, the light and darkness and the universe and what is good. And, you know, it was an interesting at the, I'm just going to quickly digress my own point at the very end when she's having the conversation with, with evil Lynn or, or super Lynn or whatever the hell she calls herself at the end. And she says, um, you know, we, people argue, people fight, people are, have differing of opinions, but how you essentially resolve that conflict is what makes us stronger and propels us ahead. I mean, it's a very timely message, right? Like that's obviously, you know, there's, there's no, uh, you know, it's not being uh, hidden from us. It's obviously what, what, you know, what the message to us is, but that all being said, I do have an issue with how the whole entire power structure worked 
Um, I don't understand, you know, why everybody all of a sudden had the power, <laughs> why Evil Lynn maintained the power if she didn't have the sword anymore, why uh, Skelegod had the power before, uh, you know, um, Evil Lynn took it away from, like, there was all these different things. And I, I, to be, so when Tila then goes through this into the, the pond of, you know, the wishing well or whatever, and she sees the universe and she sees all this type of stuff. And you do see this, this tug of war between darkness and goodness in the universe as they're intertwining. And one, you know, without the other, there's just, I felt like there was, because you were dealing with all these powered up characters, I think it kind of took away a little bit from it, um, from her ascension uh, as, you know, into that role. But, but that's just me. Infinity's gems is the answer <laughs> yeah yeah Very when strong. tila started dropping these things on her knuckles uh i was like oh that's the, they are really this taking liberally from the MC. pollination <laughs> it was just what it is, is it's in the sword that, that that's well, what it is i thought it was really weird that man in arms said to the uh to tila's friend uh hey we've well, we got budapest uh, that i mean at that point you really yeah. knew that they were really taking they stuff were from really the going for it really going for it Evil and John, she had a full arc here, baby. She went full nihilism on us. She went from like, hey, man, girl power and power. Like, you can do this. Go. And then went full nihilist. And then at the end, she just let go. What What are your thoughts? Because she had probably one of the most interesting arcs in the first season. And then they just went. They were like, you know what? Let's yeah, just yeah. I, 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 I think the town this, red. Let's keep yeah, on going. One of the, that was kind of one of my issues with it. And I was as I was watching it, one... Lena Headley, right? Uh, yep. Yep. Does, does the voice when she's when she's talking? I'm like, I wonder if they realize that they have such an A-lister doing voice talent here, um, like because she really like when she's delivering dialogue, you're like you're you're really listening. Like you can yeah. like, you can clearly tell she's one of the standouts of I guess the voice act or just or just someone you you more want to watch yeah. slash listen to. So I'm like, I wonder if they were like. Hey, um, we really have something. Let's let's focus the story more on her because now we've got this great vocal vocal talent. And then she proceeds to take over the entire villain um, villain uh, position. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I, but I felt like the turn was a little bit kind of like too much. It was like all of a sudden, oh, I'm. She went from I want to f- save everybody, free everybody, talking to Beastman and being like, hey, you know, you can be like your own whatever. You don't have to like. Do ever, and I know you're like, like almost inspirational to him to all of a sudden she just kind of like flips the switch and just goes um crazy evil all of a sudden uh, although I I did find it humorous when she turned into like the big jacked uh evil Lynn yeah uh, so I look I look forward to that action figure dropping I'm sure uh, you it's do gonna be, it's gonna be funny I don't know who, who's in better shape her or savage he man like you know, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> well it her. doesn't surprise yeah. me though John it doesn't surprise me that she made that turn because you know, mm-hmm. you, one could say, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Right? Okay, like yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So for her, but yes, she had like, this, like, uh, unless, she was like a quasi, unless you're, she was a good guy in season one, basically. Well, yeah. Yeah, turn she's, she's to the good guy, zone. basically. She's in that gray zone. Yeah. And, and Rob, no, I felt point. like she had crossed. Yeah. Nah, she, she's, she's, uh, she's a villain by convenience. But Rob, to your point, unless you're Doctor Doom, no, no one's corrupt. The Doctor Doom, it's beneath him. Um, it, yeah, it's even Lynn had the probably the most interesting, like Tila had the most complete arc, but I think Evelyn had the most interesting arc because you got to really get a sense, even when her describing how Skeletor found her and the way that Skeletor treats her, and the man at arms went full out. He was like, Oh, we hear everything that happens in this castle. And I'm yeah. like, Oh my god, that dialogue. I was like, Woo, it is well. Not it holding back. Th- yeah. No, but it made you think that like Skeletor was like sexually abusive to her and stuff. Like the way that they were really it was like, a little, yeah, a little bit. You're like, oh my god, right? You don't know and what was, it is, yeah. Yeah, it just it felt a little. Well, it felt very mature, right? Like it felt like yeah. oh, and you've it was raised a mature this. Theme. It was a very mature. Yeah, you've raised the, this the, until the she's a young teen, and you're like him. What? Him <laughs> invading her mind kind of was, I think, one of the themes, right? And you're kind of like, whoa. This is pretty I, serious. I do think, though, that even though, you know, I said that Tila had this uh, uh, an arc of ascension, so did Eva Lynn, because yeah. she stepped out of the shadow of Skeletor, and at the end of it is her own woman, and is probably going to be her own force to be reckoned with, should there be a second season, right? Like, you see her at the very end, she's yeah. no longer 
bound um, his by, concubine yeah. <laughs> right or yeah bound by to to him so bound by that and and at the end with the for those if you watch it and haven't watched it at the end when skeletor is yelling at his minions who didn't follow him he gets taken over by the robot matrix slash yeah. fembot which has the horde insignia so i guess if there's a season two, we can expect people to rage out on the fact that She-Ra is not the way that she is supposed to be. So I look forward to that. <laughs> yeah, I look forward look to forward the rage. Hordak's invasion. Yeah, yeah. Hordak, the rage of She-Ra. That's not my She-Ra. And then I'll remind <laughs> you, She-Ra, guys, come on. She-Ra, the new she is good. The old she is awful. So, John, what... <laughs> The Make old she cartoon is debatably better than the original He-Man cartoon, though. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> after after pouring out some old English for our boys uh, Fisto and Clamp uh, Champ, <laughs> what was your favorite thing in this five episode series? What what did you what did you like the most? Um, yeah. So shout outs to those characters who just showed up and and got murked ultra fast. So that's one of the upsetting <laughs> things for me. Why I don't rate this as high. Whereas the first season we got guys like Tri who got murked and, and all those guys, um, Clamp Champ, Fisto, um, Spike or uh, Spike or also... he didn't die. Die. Yeah. No. All of them got eaten by that snake thing. All like all of a sudden, like the yeah. blades who got like no time in the original stuff. Um, he did appear in the movie, I think. Uh, and then there was a couple of other. What about things? Ram Man? It was it was Spike or <laughs> yeah, Ram Man shows up. Uh, did he die though? No, I don't think he yeah. just yeah, yeah he jumped away. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I there, believe there was, a, John, there was a whole bunch of villains. There was the, a whole the, bunch the of villains. The memoriam is Spike or Web Store. Clawful, yeah, Web Store, one of my favorites. Laid. Yeah, Goat there, was, there was a guy with the horn. Yeah, Goat Man and, and Pig Boy. <laughs> The, the, these names, I wish I was making these up. This could be a Mad Lib, Rob, yeah. where I'm like, tell me yeah. if this is a He-Man character, Pig Boy, and you'd be like, I, if, I yeah, got nothing. I, I could go get my bin of He-Man figures, and I could be like, yo, guess this guy's name. And you would probably get like 90% accuracy with just making up some random stuff based on their <laughs> right. appearance. So yeah, yeah shout out to those guys who, uh, it kind of sucks that they got just erased so quickly um, because if they do do any follow-ups to this, like, are they going to be able to come back? Maybe, maybe not. Clamp Champ, especially, he didn't really get any. He didn't get any appearances in the animated series because he showed up towards the end of the action figure line. So, um, and I think he's like maybe one of the only black guys on Eternity. So, Eternia. So that kind of sucked. Um, but my favorite part is voiced by He-Man. Method Man, by the way. No. <laughs> yeah, for like two <laughs> seconds. Like, god damn it. Like, remember the All Star cast? But yeah, uh, my favorite part is the He Man Skeletor teaming up, uh, kind of unlikely uh, allies, which was some some pretty funny moments. Uh, Mark Hamill really got into his Joker bag for this one, though. Um, but I guess just the more you let him talk, the more that's going to kind of mm-hmm. come out. Um, but I did like the two of them finally working together. That was probably my most humorous thing of, of the season. Although Ram Man flying He Man giving him the disc was pretty funny as well but you know, anyways <laughs> yeah there's skeletor he meant team stuff up. in that uh rob yeah. <laughs> your thoughts uh my favorite moment um well i'm obviously i'm a big fan of the savage he man hulk um yep. but if i'm gonna go with something different i say probably the the battle scene in that last episode was just gorgeous to look at mm-hmm. uh i i really liked it I will say I thought Skeletor was a complete boob. Uh, in this that's what he episode. does in the, That's how no, he's the, originally. That's yeah, the point. The, like he's no, not. I know, but like, the first five episodes, he was a vastly different. Like this is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Like this. Oh yeah. The, in, these the are where the issues. Him, he he defeats E Man pretty easily. No, but but the, but I think it's what's Evil Lynn said he it very well. Back. It's like what was your goal to defeat He Man, and then I don't know defeat yeah. He Man. It was like that was it. Yeah, role. that's great. He's like Rob. <laughs> I want a rocket ship. Okay, what do you need? Gas? And it's like, oh, yeah. rocket fuel? It's like, no no other thought besides I will take, and that's the same. That's He's one-dimensional in terms of I will kill He-Man. Yeah. And? Yeah. So, no, but Rob makes an excellent point. In the, in the first yeah. part of the first season, he is he is definitely seems like a force to be reckoned with. Well, he's very he proceeds... different from those 80s yeah, yeah. cartoons. Yeah. In the 80s cartoon, yeah, he would hold the staff and the sword. And He-Man would take a swing at him, and everything would fly out of his hands. He'd be right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah. So that that would probably, I, I guess, the the overall fight scene in the at the in the final, oh, yeah. the scare glow and everything. Yeah, like that was that was that was pretty epic, right? Like the animation looked really good. And uh, although there was that one moment where I think He-Man's turning around and he's going for he's swinging something, hmm. and it went like old school anime look almost, like they have like the 
like the lines of of movement on his face and his eyes went really big like i was like what it just seemed very different but yeah and and have budget and the return of oracle yeah i was gonna say Stu, is oracle i know you're a big fan of wizards like oracle's return (laughs) And 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 you know his his, his finally getting to do something with that. Yeah, that put, please put that in my bio somewhere, Stuart. That big, big Gandalf? Do you not like Gandalf? Are you not a fan Gandalf of fan? wizards? Do you not own Harry the Potter? Only, the only basketball you team. You are a fan of wizards. The only basketball team he follows. Michael Jordan. <laughs> He owns, he's a big fan of. Kazan he owns the Bernie. Charlotte. She owns the Charlotte Hornets now, John. Doctor wow. Strange. <laughs> Wow. Merlin. <laughs> what else you Merlin. got, John? What else you got? Can you can you name me anyone else who's been the uh, Sorcerer Supreme? Can you name anyone else? It doesn't matter. Brother, You're a Harry Potter Brother fan. Brother Voodoo. Yeah. Brother and Brother. one more. Can you name one more? Um, I feel oh, I know there was somebody else who was uh did Doctor Doom ever don the mantle of uh no, no, no. Oh. No. no, I don't know. Doctor Strange, not my jam. Uh, you could you could <laughs> you could say Loki. Loki has been the sorcerer. Loki, Supreme. oh okay. Yeah, that's that's a gimme. Okay, um, and then we'll jump quickly to stupid. I can't believe they did this stuff, uh, John. <laughs> um, like, what do you mean, stupid? Like, like in the series? Like, what? Why the, did in they the last do this? episode, what was just the worst? Um, there's a point where they're fighting Fisto and uh, <laughs> and Clamp Champ, and they and they throw like the lame they like start throwing like ninja stars at them or something like that it's like really ineffective like <laughs> combat and i'm like and then and then their then their resort is to just blow them up i'm like really you can't think of a way to like subdue these guys and then shout outs to he-man who decided not to turn into savage he-man to save his two friends um but wait till <laughs> well um, no he, a little savage, more <laughs> to be fair savage he-man just would have ripped off their heads like he maybe, can't control yeah, Savage He Man. So like Savage <laughs> so he Man would have just yeah, you know that's true, he yeah. probably would have ingested them and ate and eaten them and like just like <laughs> the real Hulk just would have took a bite out of them. So he probably like, oh maybe we could save them. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. So yeah, yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll leave the uh, the fistle line to Rob. But yeah, I think I think when <laughs> when they proceeded to fight, go ahead, guys, buddy, go ahead. And it felt like they weren't really giving it much effort, and then they just decided to blow them up. And I was like, oh man, really? <laughs> Rob. Yeah, you know, for me, there's a lot left, a little bit, quite a, quite a bit left on the on the the table that I would have liked to have seen. You know, we talked about how this is a collective effort. They made a, a very intense point in the first five episodes of showing us what happens to the champions of Eternia afterwards. You see the whole bunch of them there. They actually reference a couple of them. You see them uh, essentially watching the universe kind of collapse on itself in these episodes. I thought it would have been cool if you have reality is bending and altering. I think it would have been cool to have all the other, the past He-Man champions uh, yes. drop down, right? Like, I think it would have been, if you're putting that out there, it, I kind of feel like you've got them out there. You've shown them again, these last five, and you're doing nothing with them. Um, I thought that the voice, I, like, I just felt that the delivery of these lines in these final five were just so different than the first. I felt yeah. it was a more of a serious, cool, like tone to the first and then not as much this one as evidenced by his the dialogue from his mother i don't know if it who the actress was if it was a choice but she's like watch out everybody ah, yeah I, I prince adam's mom she goes watch well, it's, out it's everybody Silverstone, I i've got a bomb <laughs> like that i was like give me like you know lay off my son like i was like oh for god's sakes like you That's know cool, obviously cool herself, turn- alicia silverstone well, it just, it didn't, it, I didn't <laughs> recognize her voice. It just, I thought that the dialogue, I just thought that the, the, the dialogue between a lot of these characters in these final five were, they harkened back to the original cheesy series. Hmm. And I was a little bit taken aback because that's not the tone we got for the first five. So that's all I'm going to say. That okay. being said, still loved it. Still had no, a fun time with it. Again, uh, I, I, again, we're, we're saying that and, and uh, we recommend going back. Although... We're going to talk about this other show based Wait, on there's another show mark millar's property a limited comic book series called super crooks never heard it's been made into yeah trust me no one's read this limited series uh there's a four issue limited rob with mark millar and the art was by lino francis you right. so like it, it looked incredible yes it, it, it looked incredible at the time. It's uh, It's been now stretched into a 13-episode, 22-minute anime uh, on Netflix. I, for <laughs> one, am happy they went anime route because there's 
they butchered uh, Jupiter's Legacy so much in live action. For them to try to do it on this show, I just would have sat and been like, cheap, 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 looks looks this. Like, just, yeah, it, this is not a cheap show. So I'm glad they, they did it and they did an anime so they don't have to drag this to a 42-minute massacre because already it didn't need to be this long. 13 episodes was yeah the right amount i'll tell you the four issues in the comic book was kind of a stretch as well <laughs> you're like this is maybe one issues worth of content you've got here yeah um, but yeah shout out to mark miller who must be an amazing pitch man he so. sold for those who don't remember or forgot a long time ago back when ips were hot and everyone was trying to get stuff uh he sold miller world all his intellectual property coming off the hits of, of uh, kick ass and kingsman kingsman he sold is like i'll give you all of it netflix you can have it all for 31 million dollars and then netflix is like sure that seems like a great idea and i'm sure netflix is like can we return these ideas back to you what's the return policy on these uh, I, got, I got a gift receipt um, <laughs> i'm wondering if i could exchange you know what, it i, I guess if, if good. one of them if one of them hits i don't know if that gets their money back i, I think the well, magic remember, order they had or the something magic, becomes like a massive hit. They had the magic order, which apparently is the good one, but it got canceled because it's, they couldn't afford it, it because of. It, oh, it got, really? So it's not. Yeah, happening? No, it, no, it is now. Book two. Okay. Back. No, no, no. So what they. Yeah. So they were about to go into production and they canceled it because of the COVID restrictions and costs. Yeah. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah. They've now I think it was just this past summer. They are now back into production uh, ramping up. I think filming was to start either the end of this year or early next or maybe yeah. they've already started it, but they were going back into production on it. So, yeah. yeah. They, since then, Mark Millar has done Jupiter's Legacy on Netflix, which survived one year, one season, and that was done. And that was a drama. Even it survived a weekend. We talked about <laughs> it. Yeah. It was long. It was long. Uh, Rob and I, yeah, it was long. And and this one, at least, I was able to get through a bunch of it. And I'm glad oh, once one and why. done, one season is over. So we asked Rob to watch it because... We're massive. You guys hate me. Yes. Uh, and, but yeah. John and I watched much more of this. And we were talking to Rob about watching this episode. And we're going to recommend for you folks at home. John and I watched episode one and two. We told Rob to skip one because one is not necessary. Just go straight to two. Because one is. Do, do we, do we want like to describe to Rob what happened? <laughs> pro, pro, like prologue. Like it's just one of the epilogue that like we're just going to put this in here because we need to stretch out these episodes. And it doesn't make sense to put this episode in the middle of the season in a flashback. We'll just put it in the very beginning of the show and then we'll, we'll, we'll wash our hands. So Super Crooks is the story of a super crook uh, who's a super villain who is joining a group of other super villains to participate in a heist in Europe. And that's pretty much what it is. Johnny Lightning, he has powers of electricity. Johnny Bolt or something or something Bolt. Yeah, John Johnny Bolt or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Johnny Lightning would be too too simple for Mark Miller. He had to come <laughs> up with something a little crazier. So, I think Rob, Johnny don't, wait, don't answer yet. So <laughs> when you Johnny to, Lightning when we, was to be fair was the in the comic book, but they changed it to Johnny Bolt in the anime series. Okay, so oh, they, okay. Did, they did change the name. So yeah, uh, and and in traditional anime style the artwork is that and they also unlike he-man which pay a lot of money for voice actors nobody in this cast is anyone they're all basically voice actors who only do voice work yeah. so it is a very different in tone netflix basically went after all the money we burned on that last show we're gonna go cheapo on this one cheap actors yeah. which get done anime no this, but the, the original studio. dialogue for this is japanese i believe yes. so this is done by a studio called bones or something which is like actually a big deal anime studio um, do we do we want to get into episode one first too and then let bob uh, tell us yeah so we're, we're for those non-spoilers uh no just go into it, it doesn't make a difference just get into it, <laughs> it, it no honestly because yeah. i would never recommend anybody to watch any of this shit so you guys just go like full-on <laughs> spoilers yeah so in typical mark miller fashion this is um adult oriented yep. uh exploration yep. into the idea of super criminals and and the other side so as a concept it actually sounds really cool. I'm um, sure, however, like, to your point, John, yeah. the yeah. pitch probably was, hey, you like Marvel movies? Hey, you like Ocean's Eleven? This yeah. is super villains 
join together to rob a bank in Europe. Yeah, yeah. well, Think well about also you like you like watching outlaws like Sons of Anarchy. Well, how about superhero outlaws? So I think I think the pitch for this sounds way better than what we get in the end product. Execution. And 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 I'll and I'll say that the the comic series um was it was all just flash, no no substance. You you would tune in for the uh Lino Francis U art, um but the storyline was definitely no I don't I didn't get to the end of this anime, but um, it was this anime definitely feels like it it, it could be better um, but yeah no uh, the, the whole first episode unfortunately is a setup for basically a classic Mark Millar joke so basically they take uh, My Hero Academia who's anyone who's familiar with that which is a world of superheroes and there's there's a kid who wants to be a superhero mm-hmm. and then they make him become a superhero and then he and then he does this crazy thing which is Mark Millar's trademark of murdering or, or like just something wacky and disgusting happening that flips him into a villain. So Rob, when you watched episode two, if you ever wanted to know the origin of this lightning boy- No, I don't. From, from when he's a child, not even when he, how he got into jail. <clears throat> episode two opens with how he got into jail. Not even that, as a childhood, him developing his powers yeah. and then something silly happening where he basically goes to a pool, which I knew this was coming. As soon as they said pools too, I'm like, yep. oh, Mark Miller is going to do it. And what happens is he electrocutes and, kills everybody in this pool which is and you just see bodies of kids and and animals and all this kind of craziness and then for some reason a, a truck crashes into a building and crushes a priest in a church like like silly ass mark miller having fun murdering people which is really bizarre um that this writer gets away with this all the time um john it's, which is unwatchable it's, it's a dark world <laughs> in scotland it's yeah it's, the, <laughs> the sun doesn't shine and all you gotta do yeah. is drink yeah. your whiskey i questioned so 25 minutes of setting up this joke which is a spoof of basically my hero academia you're like oh it's gonna be like my hero academia and then they do the spin like the flip it's all like yeah. it's like they watched invincible and like you know that little twist at the end of the invincible episode one let's do something like that but it has no there's no reason for it. Yeah, like it, no it's, reason. It's, it's ridiculous. So yeah, jump to, straight to episode two. Stu, do you want to talk about episode two or we want to go straight to Rob? Let's get Rob's thoughts. Rob, All right, Rob episode two. So tell, you don't know us. any of the, did, And you've already said you didn't care about this guy's origin. So episode two opens. He's in jail. He's a full adult no, now. Wait, first of all, episode two opens with the weirdest like oh, <laughs> the weirdest, I about the intro. <laughs> intro. <laughs> right? I, know. It's like, I was like, what is... I didn't it, realize. Honest, yeah, I didn't it realize was like that this was Elaine dancing in Seinfeld for those kids yeah. who were like Elaine just just dancing and recording but, herself. But throw well, in and, the odd stripper move because it's Mark Millar. Yeah, <laughs> and so like I, for, I didn't realize it was like this type of animation style. Like it was a full on like J- Japanese an- anime. Like I was, okay, whatever. It, look, it does look nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, but. The proportions, like when she's dancing at the beginning, so I'm like, what am I watching? And it's like her leg grows like 18 feet, and she's yeah. doing all this weird Elaine-like dancing, but she's like pumping her hips and like, as my daughter would say, she's like throwing it back or whatever. Like, and I was like, what is hat? Why is this girl like? What's happening here? And then like, and I actually messaged you guys like, why am I watching like this chick dancing? What's going on? And then you get into the prison scene. And within like literally 90 seconds, there's a prison rape joke. Uh, and which it actually doesn't make sense because the guy's like, oh, it's too bad. Because Johnny, Johnny Rocket or whatever Johnny his stupid Bolt. name is, Johnny Bolt is, is getting out of prison that day. He's being, as he said, kicked out. Uh, so his, his, his punishment, his time is up. And as he's walking by, some dude with like girls like, oh, you're leaving. It's too bad because I would have liked to have a, a, a crack at that ass. And then he goes around and, and shows Johnny Bolt his own ass. And I was like, wait whose ass did you want to take a crack at? Like, or did you want your ass to getting a crack? Like what's happening here? And then Johnny Bull doesn't, nobody picks him up. I, I don't know, whatever he gets home or his, no, the girl, girl, the girl picks him up. Yeah. Casey, right. The one that was dancing. And as she's, yeah, but how could I forget this? Because she's driving <laughs> and then reaches over and starts giving him a hand job. Right. Like you don't, Oh, she's like, Oh, the hand goes up. And then he's like, <laughs> like that as she's driving. And I was like, all right, you know, like, Maybe prison does have its benefits, and then, and then usually anime usually then, anime doesn't go there. You know what I mean? Anime usually just well, presents you with um, sexy characters, and that's right. it. Well, but this she, one, 
Yeah. And then they get home and she's like full on taking clothes off. Now you don't really see much anything. You see a lot of outlines and shadows, but she's definitely naked. He's down into a speedo. He go, they go into the room to go like, you know, bump uglies. And there's like, speaking of uglies, there's three guys, three super villain friends. They're like, Jordan, you're home. And then he's like, hey guys. And she's like, are you kidding me? How'd you get in here? Like we're super villains. Of course we can break into your apartment. And then he starts hanging out with his friends while his naked girlfriend is like waiting for him. I'm like, dude, I'd be like, good to see you. I'll be back in two minutes. Rob, like, I Rob like, but you, you pardoned the fact that there was fried chicken and pizza and you've been in prison for a long time. I don't know, man. I, no, I, I, pizza. yeah. The, you yeah, already got well, it. You already, you've already released cold said, pizza said Ackerman is, in the vehicle yeah. on the way. <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't make a difference. You know, if I, if I have a chance to get in there, I'm getting in. So then this whole, the rest of this episode is, I honestly don't even know what the hell I watched. It, <laughs> it became like an exercise of just like, of me trying to focus because I was like, what they, you know, these guys, you know, are, are staking out the stuff, the bank, I guess they go to this app a lot. And I guess, or this, they're showing like all these different locations of which they're going to hit and stuff like that. And, and they're figuring out where they're going to, to pull off this heist. To be very honest with you, I, I, like, I really want to swear. I know that we don't sometimes maybe we have younger people who watch this episode, but if you do cover your ears, little ones, okay. I fucking hated this show. <laughs> I went, like with the passion of a thousand sons. I, I have zero interest in ever seeing anything about this again. Um, you know, I don't give a shit about Mark Millar's crap anymore. You know, Kingsman and all that stuff it is still with the original studios that purchased it. That was not part of the Netflix deal. Thank God. It, you know, I was really excited when this Miller world stuff, you know happened because i thought oh we're gonna get reborn and just as john said about this original four issue comic because everybody went there thinking it was going to be one thing and it became something different and we all went there we picked up reborn six issues thinking because of greg capullo after his amazing batman run be like this is going to be great that first issue was solid and then it's five issues of shit and i was like man they're going to do that property dirty on netflix because they did <laughs> jupiter's legacy dirty they've done this dirt i mean i don't I, I'm all I'm all for like the sexual innuendo and I'll I'll watch people like in cartoons having sex. I don't care about that, but just didn't show it. I'm done. I hate this episode. I was so bad at that both of you guys were making me watch it. I would I, you know, I you know I mean, bad news, but at least at least we made you skip the first episode. Because I think if you watched that first episode, you would have been like, what the F? No, I actually, I, I swear to God, I sent a message to these two guys and I, and I was like, I hope you both get gonorrhea. Because I, was so bad. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I curse you with gonorrhea. Curse you. I was this, so angry. But, but, this is, but this is great because this is exactly why Andre has a problem with Mark Millar because he seems to be able to attract this A-list talent. Greg Capullo, Lino Francis Yu, like every big name under the sun seems to do the artwork on this guy's comic book. So it's like, it's a really bizarre Tell money talks. Um, Maybe they paid him a lot of money. It's like, I'll take, yeah, less. it's, it's, it's really weird that he's able to acquire this talent. And then it, and then it turns into selling. Like, I wonder if he kicked back any of that 30 million to, to those artists that helped make his name on these no, books and probably, stuff no, like that. Not, like not, the only, the deal is like probably the only thing more in the books now. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't like the only thing I can think of that I read of his, that I really did enjoy was uh, the authority. Did he do the he did the authority, um, yeah, for a little bit, and mm -hmm. then he also did the Ultimates, which was basically Marvel version of Authority. And then I yeah. feel like he just ran out of juice after that, and now everything he does is like a really good, like Rob said, first issue or initial concept or pitch, yeah. and then that's it. So it's really bizarre. Like any yeah. of you fans, hardcore fans, let us know what you like. If if you really dig this stuff, let us know what about yeah. it. It's, it just it was draws you because watching you that like the adult scene. factor or like what. Yeah, sorry. Watching Steve, that first episode was a stretch. Like I went through them like Yeah, because you're an anime happening? guy, right? I'm an anime guy. Like, I'm a big, yeah, a I'm, I'm a big anime animation guy. guy, period. I love animation. I love anime. Yeah. I'm, I'm all about it. And watching that first How many episode, episodes like, deep did you get? How many episodes deep six. did you get? Six. I'm oh six God. deep. You're like, why? Yeah. Like because a lot more happens later. Like, like a yeah, million like things that you could waste your time on. Like, yeah, I would have exactly. rather I, I you know what? Honestly, Rob, I'm you're talking to you a right guy now. that watched Dune three times already. I got yeah, you, nothing you know but what? Time. You're yeah, but you know what though? You probably would have enjoyed a bout of dysentery for that same amount of time than having oh, to Rob, watch this. Again, I am a true artiste and I watch everything, every fast movies, slow movies. You have to watch everything to get a proper understanding of the art and of of media slash entertainment. Like you just I watch a lot of stuff, man. I watch a lot of stuff. I know you but do. I could not watch this tripe. 
Like, this I don't know who it's made for. And I'll tell you right now, until you messaged us on Monday or Tuesday saying, hey, Super Crooks is dropping on 25th. I was like, what the hell is that? I there's been no promo on this from Netflix. There's been there no was commercial. a month ago, but I, I was like, eh, we'll see what happens. And then I saw nothing. I saw nothing about it. I it didn't even go in my coming I, soon. Like my I remember Buzz for the comic book. I remember yeah. Buzz for the comic book. Yeah. I don't remember anything about it, the there was about stuff the TV like a series, month but ago. it is all very Japanese, right? And then I was like, okay, this looks I was waiting and I was like, okay, well, once I knew it was only 22 minutes, I'm like, okay, we can we can do this it's it's reasonable so, longest 22 minutes ever it, it's not 48 <laughs> watch episode one and you'll Cowboy change your Bebop. mind buddy <laughs> that, that's that's rough like that's two episodes of watching super crooks like that's making you watch episode one and two of super crooks and that's really difficult like well, i honestly right. would have driven to wherever you are <laughs> and i would have like taken out like a ball peen hammer and just started breaking toes because <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> i was not happy <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it, it's interesting because like the voice acting's not bad, but I feel okay. I feel like they, they could have spent a couple more bucks and got some like, you know, really established like anime actors and as vo- as, as dubs like, you know, it, talking about the English dub. You know right what? Now. You know what? This I, is I like one Japanese. of those. It was fine in Japanese. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I feel like Netflix has done what we've all probably, or we know people who have done, when you, you saw something really cool on Instagram shop or on your Facebook marketplace and you and bought, bought these it. things and then it comes there and you open it up and you're like, what the hell is this shit? These aren't the boots I wanted. I you know, or whatever. I feel like Netflix is like, yeah, we got Miller World. We're, we're going to be in line with Sony and their whatever that universe that they have and uh, what they're happening yeah and yeah. yeah we're gonna be all we're gonna be competing with all this stuff and open up the box of middle world shit and he's out in scotland eating like really high price haggis and they're like oh shit here like now we have to make comic books too like i i, I yeah i would honestly i'd be very happy that if they just said okay we're no longer producing any of his stuff i i this magic order like because I know we'll end up having to watch the episode for the show. I'm not, I, I won't, I'm, I'm not, if, whatever, I'm done. <laughs> I'm so angry. I, I think I'll give Magic Order a try because it is a much more uh, rich kind of uh, idea. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like this, yeah, I don't, I don't know who this, exactly this anime is going to fire for. It does, it does look nice. I'll give, I'll give you, I'll give it that it does look nice. And later on the bad guys get like Akira looking motorbikes and stuff like that. Um, so it does, it does look, it does look nice. It's got a style to it. Um, that, that looks pretty good. It, 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 it is, a. It, it's, it's got that going for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's yeah. Like, like they explain the story with that bastard guy, about how he like kills this guy, like all this guy around him. And I'm like, what's the point of the story? It doesn't really go anywhere other than just saying he's evil. Like, it, uh, it, it, and it then reaches because and, like, and then they on. call him the bastard. And then I'm yeah. like, why do they call him the bastard? I don't understand why they call him the bastard. He, uh, he happens later him. in the why? series. Yeah, he, he shows up later again. It's it's a lot of no, no, he, he, he is the main he is the main heist in the comic book, and it looks like yes. in this one they tie him yep. owning the prison to the main heist, which which has no connection in the in the comic yep. book. And yep. and he does it, use like think, a, think a about gun this for a second. His... Back back so they paid thirty one million for all of Millar World. Back in the year of our Lord in 1995, Sony bought Spider-Man for what, $10 million? Yeah. And could have bought all of Marvel for 30. Marvel's like, you can have all of all of Marvel for 30 million. And they're like, yeah, your other characters are, are trash. We'll just buy Spider-Man. Yeah, one. but Sony, that is the Valiant universe. That's what I was thinking of. Sony went in on the Valiant Valiant. universe, but 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 back in the day when Marvel was so (laughs) broke and desperate, they're like, we'll sell you the entire Marvel universe for 30 million. Like, ooh. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot more money yeah. than we're willing to do right there. And then years later, Disney bought them for three billion. So that's all you need to know about that. Whoever made that decision at Sony should be in trouble. Nonetheless, Super Crooks is super shit. John, what do you have a rating? What's your rating? I can't even rate this. I definitely don't even. I don't want to give it any like. Uh, for for the animation, uh, the, I guess the people that worked on it, the Japanese voice acting sounded fine. Mm. Um, so I have to, I'll give it like a three just because the animation is nice. Five, it's a five. You give it five, yeah, it's a five. I, I think a negative I think one. Ep- <laughs> if if you, if you go episode two is actually 
a five. Like again, the I like the concept of the Paterion superhero that like his superpowers are constantly different. And I like the idea that like everyone takes bets as to what his powers are going to be. So I liked that. And I liked how, you know, no. Yeah, like there's, there's a great I can imagine there, that like, if we're also villains, of course, we're going to be like, Rob will be like, guys, I got a plan. Okay. <laughs> we're going to be like, oh, <laughs> God damn it, Rob. Be like, guys, there's this diamond. It's called the Hope Diamond. We can we can flip yeah, this right. for a couple million dollars. And then it just. I know a guy. I know a guy. And then it's like you, me, and Andre sitting there going, I guess. Like, what are you doing Saturday? I guess. Fine. We'll join you on your heist. Like, I imagine in that universe, it's just a bunch of idiots talking in their garages, trying to figure stuff out. Probably less planning than all of the planning that happened in the uh, the uh, Guy Ritchie movie we reviewed a few few months ago uh, with the... Uh, Wrath of Man? Wrath of Man. Much more planning went into Wrath of Man than this heist, but uh, nonetheless, it's I liked a few aspects of that. I liked the girlfriend's powers. Like it, it was real good. I think if you, we talked about before, when you do your pilot and your pilot is basically an epilogue, it's bad. Like I'm, I'll be surprised. Oh, that, those, those, those first two episodes. Yeah. When, when I told Rob to watch the second one, I'm like, oh man, do I, do we tell him to watch the third one or the fourth no, one instead? No, like, no. It doesn't, it doesn't really like get rolling, like really rolling. Really? Anywhere. So like episode that's four. I gave it. Yeah. It doesn't really get going. And then, and that's what we talked before. Like we can compl- we complain about shows and about runways. No one gets that courtesy anymore. Back no, in the two right. thousands, you could be like, "Oh, watch six episodes; it really gets going." Now, mm-hmm. with so much options around you, if something takes six episodes to get steering, like that's, I guess, the one thing about Breaking Bad. It's like, well, once you pass season one, you get that pass when you're Breaking Bad, and because it came out in the year two thousands. But now, if your show is doesn't have its act together in season one or in the first two episodes. It's over. Like no one, no one should give you that chance. Like it, it doesn't work anymore. So, uh, yeah, I, I think, whew, man, I guess if you have it in the background, if you're doing something else, but yeah, yeah. Uh, just I, for I, the I'm record, curious to know if someone likes this. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, here's my face, and I'll give my rating in a second. Here's my face in the prison scene where he takes off his shirt. He's got they've got this electrocuting yep. vest on. Yeah. And he takes a vest off. And you still see the marks on his body as if he had been tanning. Like, and I, this is my face. <laughs> That's all you need to know about this fucking show. So I'm giving it a two, and I'll tell you why. One point for the hand job in the car, <laughs> and, and two, two for, for almost the- getting, for, for all, uh, point five for almost getting laid. And then the other point five, eventually he did get laid. Uh, his girlfriend was uh, uh, that, no points for the, the dancing th- intro. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, there's no points to the dancing intro at all. There's no points. Rob, to that Rob's at all. giving he's giving a point. He's giving him plus for uh, one point for the dance, but a subtraction for the weird guy showing his butt. So it all evens out. Yeah, at the end. yeah, <laughs> back, back yeah. To two. Whose butt? Who did you want to take a crack at? I'm very confused by this joke. Yeah, so that was a minus. <laughs> so we're back at two. Uh, John, where can people find you at the in the? online in in the desert of the real so so yeah so follow us all on all of our socials heroes world online instagram facebook uh twitch uh youtube uh and if you're on the audio we are available on spotify and itunes wherever you get your podcast uh heroes world podcast uh and then if you are venturing out in the real world uh we are located in markham ontario uh, 8601 warden avenue we're directly in that northeast corner with a big with a big plaza lots of stuff cool stuff going on no frills uh Shoppers Drug Mart, Canada Computers, uh, Felix and Norton Cookies, very popular. And uh, now we have a Cocoa Bubble Tea. So we, we, we got your desserts covered. Uh, so please give us a visit. And you can message us through any of those means if you're interested in products, looking for Christmas ideas, need things shipped out, um, or just wondering what, what the hell we carry and things like that, d- definitely get us there and we'll, we'll get back to you on ASAP. Yes. Any support is most welcome, whether it's a small purchase or liking, subscribing, bell, share, all the social media platforms. Uh, including the uh, Discord. So uh, everything is super helpful at this standpoint, uh, especially in this weird, still COVID time. So here we go. Uh, and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Let no wrong, no, you're wrong. He's wrong. And you love super crooks. Or let us know that we're wrong when it comes to He-Man. And yeah, let us know He-Man. Like, did, did that gap hurt it? I feel like for me, the gap really hurt it. 
And in, in, mm. because in between the gap, they released another He Man show, the, the animated kind of kids themed one, which I actually overall like better than this one so far. We'll see how that one wraps up if it does wrap up. But yeah, they, I feel like that gap really hurt it for me. Rob, what do we got for the sidekick show on Saturday on, on Monday? Well, when we're not uh, spanking it to Miller World anime properties, uh, you can find no us. Is. No one is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, you know what? Maybe some people are. Maybe that's <laughs> yeah, what I was the like, oh, is. Casey and Johnny Bolt. So that's my jam. <laughs> um, you can find uh, John and I Monday night, uh, eight fifteen on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. We are doing a revisit of the Spider-Man movies. Last week we did the Sam Raimi trilogy. This week we're going with what John says is likely outside of Nicholas Hammond, his favorite interpretation of Spider-Man. That is the Andrew Garfield, amazing Spider-Man one and two directed by Mark Webb, uh, which is his real name. Amazing in brackets, not so much (laughs) Spider-Man. I don't know why you're, I I see what you're doing. This is a bit. I'll play along because I know you're. I was like, remember that weird (laughs) GMC commercial where Dennis Leary starts talking about singing about how he's uh, all starts doing a rant with a, a movie screen and whatnot and he starts singing a song did that uh, happen in this movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so you definitely listen you can you can join us there you could find us uh again youtube facebook and twitch if you haven't seen the movies yet you can find them streaming i know that the first one i think is on amazon prime or netflix the second one in canada is on the ctv movies app it's just it's free there's gonna be some ads in it but it's free so you can check it out there and then join john and i 8 15 monday night as we revisit the amazing Spider-Man and the amazing Spider-Man two. Yes. Exciting times. Well, thank you so much. Hopefully you already fell asleep with the announcement of the titles in those two movies. I'm just thinking about, I'm just thinking about that song that Dennis Leary sang uh, about the, uh, the parody song from back in the day. That was uh, in the year of our Lord, 1998. I think that song. You're not talking about I'm an asshole. Are you? That's correct. That's correct. You are. (laughs) It was just called asshole, but he was like, I'm an asshole. Leo, 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 Leo. I knew Rob would know him because we're both old. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And assholes. <laughs> He's an asshole, sir. What? <laughs> what? Who got you this job? Uh, <laughs> Spaceballs joke. Uh, oh, man. Your, yeah. What, what's your name? I feel sir? Like we should throw that uh, back out. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good stuff. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, And we will see you soon. Goodbye, everyone. See ya.